No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. Ah, hello there, gin lovers. Welcome back. I am Bobby Freeman, coming to you from my humble, dirty, smelly, and quite dusty studio in South East London, where today I bring you quite um, quite a sort of an ugly behemoth of a bottle, if I'm absolutely honest. And and also, as my regular viewers and subscribers will know, well, let me, let me let me before I get into all that, let me introduce you to it, shall I? As is customary on this channel, this little fellow is called Hendrix Amazonia Gin. And as I was going to say a minute ago, many of my regular viewers and subscribers will know, I have. Oh, how do I describe it? A complicated relationship with this gin brand, Hendrix. I don't, basically, I don't like them. I don't like the original one over there. I haven't liked almost all of them. There was one that was okay, and I can't remember the name of it, which is useful for this video, isn't it? But even then, to be honest, it wasn't my favorite. I find it's lacking in all the stuff that makes gin fun. All the sort of the nice citrus, the sort of the, you know, that just sort of the ginness. The kind of the ginness. It's got no ginness. Well, it's got ginness, but to me, it's sort of dampened with a sort of a, that heavy sort of rose taste. Now, but, but obviously, of course, as I've said before, it is, I am, you know, in, I think I'm in the minority with this one because it's massively popular, hugely popular. You'll see this all around the world. Maybe not this particular one, but Hendrix itself. So the reason I'm gabbling on so much is I think I think today, finally, this is the final one I haven't tried. Some people, a lot of people have been recommending it. And I think today it might, I've just got a little feeling, it might be the one that I finally enjoy. However, before we get stuck in, I must again thank one of my wonderful viewers who has become one of my patrons. So Mr. Kane Hartley, I've got my glasses on, hang on. Yeah, definitely Kane Hartley. Kane Hartley, thank you very much. You are now an official supporter of the show. Can you imagine how your life will be enriched and improve for the better. I can't either, but I'm, I, I'm sure it will in one way, shape or form. So you are an official supporter of the show. I, and I quite literally salute you. So then let's crack on. Now, because this is a kind of a sort of a, a bit of a, uh, what's the way to sort of call it? A kind of a, a sort of a, an underground, lesser known kind of um, uh, limited edition, possibly. I don't know, but it's not very widely seen. I'd never seen it on the shelves here before. I had to order it off uh, off, uh, off the uh, this, this thing called the internet. It's a new thing. I think it's going to catch on. But I, so th they don't actually have it. My point is they don't actually feature it on their website. Well, I don't think they do anyway. I, I, I didn't really look, but I'm sure they don't. No, nope, I was right, they don't. So what I've done is I've gone onto a website called Master of Malt, which is a very popular uh, site where you can order alcohol here in the UK. And it's got a little bit about it on there. So I'm gonna read it. And of course, as we know, Hendrix is Scottish. So once again, I shall be dusting off. Wait, well, uh, to be honest, I was gonna say dusting off the Scottish accent, but to be honest, it's out so often, it hasn't even gathered dust. So I'll just give it a light buff and uh, get straight into it. Inspired by her travels to the, hang on, that's not Scottish. Inspired by her travels to the Amazon rainforest, Hendrix master distiller Leslie Grace added Amazon flora, its original, what? Added Amazon flora to its original recipe. I'm struggling with the, with the R's today. That's the R's, not the R's. I'm not struggling with the R's. R's is fine. Delivering Amazonia, a gin with a truly exotic twist. For every bottle sold, the non-profit organization One Tree Planted will plant a tree in Peru. Uh, Peru? Per Peru. <laughs> Plant a tree in Peru, sounds like a song. I plant a tree in Peru, just for you. With it one year later, but the f***ing thing had not grew. Or maybe not. Originally released, I really struggle with these R's today. Again, not my R's. Originally released for the travel retail market. We think this will add a flourish, a flourish, flourish. I got it in the end. Flourish of exotic flavour to a classic gin, garnished with a good chunk of fresh pineapple or a wedge of pink grapefruit. Now then, get a load of these botanicals. We've got the classic Hendrix cucumber, which I'm no very pleased about, as you know. And gentle floral, 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 ro rose, ah, oh, bollocks. I'll give the accent a break for a minute. Um, with gentle floral rose petals, which rest beneath tons of Fruit. Okay, so we've got sweet, juicy pineapple, orange, lime, even hints of guava and dragon fruit coming through with a slight peppery prickle on the finish. And we all like a peppery prickle on the finish, don't we? I'm not even sure what that means. However, one thing I am sure of is that is one hell of a lineup of bow 
botanicals. As you can tell, by the way, I beat my desk to the rhythm of the sentence. Pineapple, orange, lime, and all that. It sounds great. I mean, all that stuff together, it sounds great to me. However, we did do one in my last video, which had a load of citrus, but I reckon it was too much citrus. It tasted a little bit kind of like detergent, like the detergent, detergent, like washing up liquid. So, is it going to be enough to mask what I consider to be the unpleasant um, rose and cucumber flavour? For me, it could have just taken the cucumber out and have all the rest of that stuff. That sounds like a good gin. However, I really don't know what's going to happen here, but I tell you what, I'm bloody excited to find out. So why don't we do that now instead of me uh, continuing this mindless jabbering. So then, let's peel away this uh, little thing. And these things always cause me trouble. Hang on, there's a little bit of a gold bit there. Am I going to have to speed it up? No, no, I think, oh, here we go. Excellent, that bit came well. Tease that bit off, goes over there. Do we have a cork? Hang on a minute, we do. I'm not going to bother with the cork test uh, card I do. I think people are getting annoyed with it. So we'll go straight into it now. But from what I just heard, I think we have... Oh, a rather beautiful squeak. Oh my God, it's like a string quartet. Absolutely awesome. Let's go for the full pull. Oh, not bad either. About sort of medium, we've had a lot of medium level ones recently, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's just a bit of fun. So then, and already I'm getting a rather tropical blast from the bottle. Now that, oh God, it's not a very good pour of this. Oh shit, it's all over my iPad. Don't worry, I'll dry that off. Oh dear, Nerissa's going to wonder why I'm stinking of gin. Mind you, I usually do anyway. There we go. Right then, let's have a little bit of a... a pro I can get in, I'm getting... I'm getting a little bit, as I say, a little bit of tropicalness already. I haven't even got the nose in yet. So let's rectify that. Nose going in. There you go, it's in. <laughs> hmm. I'm, do you know what? I'm getting kind of two wrestling aspects. It's like sort of two main sort of aromas in there. And they're like two fat wrestlers, sumo wrestlers, in fact, sort of trying to buffer each other out of the glass, if you can imagine such a thing. On one side, you've got the kind of the classic um, Hendrix sort of flavour, the kind of the, 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 what I call the sort of the damp sort of flavours. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, look, that, look that word up in the dictionary. I'm pretty sure it's real. The mure flavours. So like the rose and the cucumber, the kind of the dull flavour. Flavors, battling with like a sumo wrestler that's dressed up with um, in one of those sort of uh, grass skirts and hula things if that's not too much of a lazy stereotype. So that's what's going on in there. They're kind of bumping up against each other. Is it pleasant? It's weird. I'd say it's weird. There's elements of really pleasant in there but kind of sort of dragged down by that. Anyway, let's not get too bogged down in the old uh, 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 aroma, as I always say. What ABV is it? Let's have a, it's a litre bottle, by the way, as well. What ABV is it? It is 43.4. Is that the same as the normal Hendrix, or has it changed at all? Uh... 41.4, so it's slightly less for some reason. I don't know why, probably a little bit of sugar gone up and all that. Anyway, let's get the old tonic in and find out what it's like as a gin unt tonic. So, what do we reckon about that much? Looks good to me, so here we go. The final instalment in the Hendrix, well, as far as I'm aware, at the moment, at the present day, which is, uh, where are we, September 2021, I say to you, Hendrix Amazonia, cheers. Here we go, going in. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm not sure yet, to be honest. <laughs> that, my friends, is not at all bad. I had a funny feeling about this one. I had a funny feeling and it was justified. It, it was a funny feeling. In fact, a hilarious feeling. I'm, 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 I'm laughing uh, uncontrollably, but on the inside. Anyway, back to the gin. Let me try and convey what's going on in here. As I say, there was two, uh, the big unpleasant, what I consider unpleasantness, was very, very present in the aroma. But as I say, there was this kind of a sort of a fruit soury kind of tropical essence buffeting up against it. However, I can <laughs> confirm that the sumo wrestler wearing the grass skirt and the hula things and, and sort of coconuts around the neck and all that, I believe has managed to wrestle the other big fat sumo wrestler out of the circle and quite literally kick his ass out of there because I cannot detect any of that. 
I can't, I don't think I can, not even the aftertaste. I can't detect any of that classic Hendrix kind of um, uh, unpleasant cucumbery and sort of and, and rose flavor. Honestly, it's like a completely different gin. They've, t well, we heard about the amount of uh, botanicals that are in there, didn't we? Uh, uh, pineapple, orange, lime, uh, hints of guava. I'm not entirely sure what guava tastes like and dragon fruit, but it just tastes hugely tropical and yes i don't think we've had a gin with pineapple before this is crazy why has no one brought a gin with pineapple it seems obvious to me why wouldn't you do that i don't know somebody else do it quick but there's definitely kind of a three-dimensional sort of as an echo of other kind of fruitiness which i can't quite place which i would imagine would be the gar guava and the dragon fruit it's like sort of familiar pineapple and oranges and there's kind of an echo of something else in there as well sort of rippling around the edge however it's not Heavy, I'm not really getting any juniper to be honest. It's not really a purist gin. It's kind of what we call a fruity gin, a novelty gin. So this is good guys, this is very, very good. So let's give it a go neat, give it a whirl, see how we get on um, without the tonic. So, <laughs> oh, not so nice, not so nice. You lose all the sweetness there. Sweetness disappears and it's just kind of sharp and quite harsh and a little bit of that Hendrix sort of taste. Yes, definitely now, definitely lingering in the top of the palate. What do I say the palate? It's the mouth for goodness sake, stop being so pretentious. But yeah, it's definitely lingering in there. It's like someone's walked into a room, farted and then left and just sort of, you're sort of, uh, sort of wallowing in the remnants of what they've left behind. Which I'm sure is a description that uh, Hendrix and uh, Leslie Grace will be absolutely thrilled by. But you know, I speak as I find, quite literally. So then, so then, so then, so then, we come to the thorny issue of price. Now it's a little bit misleading this because this is actually, as I say, a litre bottle. I'm not sure if you can see, it's got kind of like grabbing handles here, which is great because they're quite a fat bottle, so I quite like that. I'm, I'm very unlikely, but uh, uh, not, not, it wouldn't be impossible, but I'm unlike, less likely to drop it, but it still could happen. But my point is, my point is, it's usually a little bit on the price side, Hendrix. This is, this will cost you, if you're in UK, 55 pounds, okay, which is a hell of a lot for a gin. However, you do get more because obviously it is a litre bottle. I'm not sure how it works out. To be honest, I th well, just to give you an idea as well, that's 76 dollars and 47 euros. So that, I still think the fact that it's a litre bottle, that's bloody expensive. And that's one, another complaint I've had about Hendrix is they've always been quite expensive. So yeah, and apparently you can only get it it's primarily for, I think you just get it in airports, in duty-free lounges. So, um, well, let's just end that little section here and I shall move on to the summary and include what I was just about to say. So guys, so guys, so, 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 here is the summary as promised. Hmm, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. I think it would be brilliant over ice in the middle of summer. We're, having, so we're just coming to the end of summer here in the UK, so I might sort of leap on the opportunity to have one in the back garden, because that's how British people enjoy most things, in the back garden. In fact, you know what? I think I might even enjoy it in the front garden, so everyone can see me drinking my gin. And I, I, I don't care, they can look, let them look, that's what I say, let them look at what they can't have. So this is a wonderful way to end my sort of rather difficult relationship. Well, end, yes, bring to a close, conclude my relationship with the Hendrix dynasty. It's a very nice gin. It's not a purist gin. It's not gonna be heavy on juniper, but it does lack that original, what I thought, unpleasant taste. And it's replaced it with a lovely tropical fruit salady uh, uh, mix. And who, who is gonna dislike that? No one. And if you do, wow, well, to be honest, I think there's something wrong with you. So guys, what a video today. I've, I've really enjoyed this one. I've done it a bit, a bit of a different time of day. I usually do it early in the morning now, but I couldn't this morning because there was an incident outside my house and it was very noisy and ruining all my videos. However, I've done it in the afternoon. I think I might change it actually. I've, I've, I think I preferred it a little bit more. Do, have you preferred watching it? I don't know. Let me know in the section below. If you have, however, don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe to my channel, press the little like button on this here video and the little uh, the bell icon so you get notified when the new videos come out. And if you want to support the show, like good old uh, Kane Hartley did, uh, head over to the old Patreon page. I always point up there. It's just up there, the Patreon page. I'm not sure why. And also, you could uh, alternatively, if you don't want to do that, if that's too difficult for you, you could simply press that join button below this video and become one of my wonderful YouTube members. But until next time, guys, you all know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to my wonderful patrons and members who make this channel possible. And of course, most importantly of all, keep drinking the gin.